yeah okay let's start so this again a continuation of our mini project right so now what yeah. we do is like what is remaining in this particular mini project is let us let us see the pages for say the page first and uh, i'll tell you so let's click on update now here what we would like to do is in the currency as of now it is just a text input right so we have to change this to drop down okay that's the first functionality and also we have this line type so this is user def actually user is entering right this should be LOV. so what we do is we'll you know we'll work on you know we'll have a line type as LOV and a currency as a drop down and also the other functionality which is remaining is we'd like to have a attachment functionality in the lines table okay so these are three things which we'll discuss so one is currency drop down line type lov and other one is attachment so for currencies let's have a query so F and currencies I think we have a currency uh, pop list I guess yeah right yeah we can directly use this one okay now in this one we have this already have this particular vivo right so now what is the information we require this is our pop list vivo and this is our vivo instance and we have these two columns currency code and currency name yeah. And in the database, we want to store currency code, but for the user, you like to show currency name. Okay? okay. So now what we do? So let's go to our DML page. See, like whenever you're using any LOV or a pop list, we have to have a clarity clarity that you know, like what value you want to store in the database and what value you want to show in the show to the user. Okay. So this is your currency item and here for the yeah for both ways yeah so header update region in the header update region i will change this one to message choice okay, okay. and then after that pick list view instance yeah so here we have to mention the view instance okay view instance name display attribute is currency name and what is the value attribute it's a currency code okay oh. and if you observe we have to have this information also we have to have view instance information also the reason is whatever the value which you select in the lov now what is the value attribute this value attribute will get copied to the this particular view instance view attribute okay yeah. okay at runtime whatever we select that currency code will get updated with the view attribute of that particular vivo we don't have to manually or programmatically do anything here. no nothing okay, okay and for the view region for the view region what we have to do it will be the same thing message text input only but now here comes a major important important difficulty here so now this is see this is a view region right okay anyways let's run yeah. the page and i'll tell you what is the issue okay Click on search, update. Okay, now you could see the currency drop down, right? Let's say I'll select up gun, save. Click on back. Now click on search. Right now, what it, what we are seeing here? We are seeing the currency code, right? Uh -huh. Now, this is one issue. Okay, we have to see currency name okay yeah update sorry not update click on view now here again the same issue currency okay. right mm -hmm. yeah. 
so well, like we can we have to solve this right we need currency name to be displayed to the user okay yeah. so of course we have an alternative what we can do is we can have a message choice here also what we can do we can change that particular component read only to true if you set read only true read only to true that will solve it okay right that is one way other way is what we can do is it is better that always have a you know like a, the sub query for currency and display that okay. right okay so now what we require is fct okay so generally like you know in the normal real time implementation most of the times you used to have a uh, functions right you will have a functions to get the generic functionality you can just yeah. simply call that but in our case as we don't have function we just need to incorporate the sub query here so take the header vivo query select statement so I just require Okay. Yeah. So we'll just have this one. currency name okay yeah so in the invoice search page we'll set that currency we'll change this to currency name in the same way in the invoice dml page in the view region right in the header view region currency we have we have to change this to currency name okay so this is how we can use of the drop downs. Yeah. In the above region also, right? One more region. In the yeah. DML page. In the update okay. region. In the update region, we should we should we have already have a drop down, right? So that will take care of the functionality. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So click on search. Yeah, can you see? We could see the currency name yeah okay and now click on view we have to see the currency name right okay in the update region it shows the appropriate one the drop down it okay. shows yeah. the selected you know it has to show the selected value right yeah right now we can see the create also so create by default it shows null and once you select appropriate one it will have the information okay okay yeah so now the next thing is line type LOV right so what we do is let us have a drop down for that so so let me open the instance we'll try to use the lookup for that okay so either way you can have a static values or better it is always better to have a lookup okay. application look up now I'll just say line type
and uh, okay just have loan full okay and now the next thing is we have to join this I mean we have to have a query for this right so first of all let's yeah. plan the query for this Okay, this is what we want. Okay. So we have to create a lobby for this one. A lobby server. Okay. New V object. Align type a lobby view. Read only access. Okay. Click on next. Next next finish okay so next thing is we have to assign the vivo to the am lov server package line type sorry line type lov vivo apply and okay now in our invoice update right invoice in the invoice dml and in the table region So this generally, whenever you use LOV, you, you generally have a problem here, okay? You have to consider what we want to store because if you consider the dropdown, you have an appropriate information like what you want to show and what you want to store. But in the LOV, you don't have that option, right? Yeah, form value. Yes, we have to use form value. That's the only option, okay? So now here, line type, right? In the update region, in the update table region, line type first of all change this one to message lov input okay and line type i'll just say lov id like this and first of all in the region of this lov create a region using a wizard table region and here select line type let's go with the default select message style text next and finish now in the mapping so what do you want to show in the LOV, we have to show the meaning, isn't it? So what is LOV yeah. region item? LOV region item is meaning, and we want to return that to line type LOV ID. In the line type LOV ID, we have to show the meaning. Yeah. Okay. But, okay, now here comes the important part. So first of all, anyways, like uh, set the state search allowed as to true for both of them, both of them. Now here in the line type LOV ID, just observe here. What do we? What are we trying to store here? We want to store meaning, right? But here we are selecting selecting line type attribute okay. of the people. So in this one, it it is expecting that it has to have a code. It's not the meaning, isn't it? Okay. So this is the issue. Now what we have to do is when you are using LOV, again you know like you have to know the difference between what you want to show and what you want to store. Okay. So first of all, let us join. Let us join the query for the line type. So in this one, what we do is, so lines, right? Okay. Click on SQL statement expert mode. This is our line type query, right? Now here, take this query first. So I'll prefer inner query, uh, sub query rather than the joins. Okay. What we do? Okay. So take this one. Okay. And FLV dot lookup underscore code is equal to line underscore type. So you're you're selecting both the code and meaning stream? No, no, we require only meaning. Code. Yeah. Meaning, okay. 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 Line type. 
Okay. So now what we do? Make just have this logic. Apply. Check the attribute mapping line type meaning. So now what we do? So in the invoice DML page, okay, in the invoice DML page for the LOV, because here the problem is we want to let us say if you already selected a value, if you have already selected a value, then then in which particular in which particular attribute the value will be there? It will be there in the line type meaning, not in the line type, isn't it? Yeah. Right? So I have to select line type meaning here. But what happens to our line type? Where it will get stored? Now we are mapping the line type meaning to this one. That's fine. But the line type meaning is a, it's a transient one. It's not a database persistent column, right? Then what happens to our line yes. type? So what we have to do is, so this one, it is only, now you have to consider this particular LOV is only for showing the data, right? Of mm -hmm. course, it will show the, it yeah. will show already existing value or it will show the selected value. But now what we have to do is create a form value here, new item, okay? So create form value, line type FP and some worker. So now what I have to do is we have to assign the view instance and view attribute also for this flex, for this uh, form value. View instance, line type, sorry, not line type, our Vivo instance, Alliance Vivo instance. This Alliance Vivo instance, what we have to select, in which column we want to store this form value? In the line type. I yeah. Right? Got it? Yeah. Now we have to create a mapping also for the form value. LOV region okay. item. Lookup code we want to return, right? Lookup code yes. should be stored in the line type form value. Yeah. Understood the logic? Yeah. Right? So when you're using LOVs, I mean, either way, whether LOV or whatever it is, in the LOV, for display purpose, have the appropriate query column, and then make sure that you also have a form value column to store the selected value. Okay, okay. Clear? Yeah. yeah. So in the view region, what we have to change? In the view region, in the line type, let it be message style text, but change this column here, we have to put to line type meaning. Meaning, yeah, okay. That's it. Okay. So, uh, if you only store it in form value, and let's say we are not mapping it to uh, the uh, vivo. Uh -huh. So, when we are when we are doing the when we are in a process form request, there we can uh, there we can call the am and then we can insert the value in the vivo, right? Or we can modify the value in the vivo. Yes, that's correct. Go. Yes, that is correct. But here, uh, form value is part of a table region, right? So in the table region, if at all, if you have any item, that always should be part of a Vivo instance. If it is independent, let us say, if the item is independent, if you just have, if you consider our header case, in the header region, we just have only one row, isn't it? You have only one mm -hmm. row. Yeah. So there you can use a form value without Vivo instance. But if your form value is a part of a table region, it will have multiple records, right? So then, you know, it, then, you know, like row, row level information, you will not have it there, right? Okay, so can we have a current row or uh, the row reference sort of thing there? Yeah, of course, but but okay. yeah, yeah, this is this is very easier. We don't have to do any coding or anything, right? Yeah, of course, we doesn't need any, we doesn't need any coding here. Yeah, yeah, okay, good, okay. okay. So select line yeah. type. Now I'll select air airway. Okay. Right, and I'll select miscellaneous for this. I'll select travel for this. I'll select stationary for this. Okay, just click on save. Now for invoice under 342, let us see from backend what is happening. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it line type air miscellaneous travel stationary yeah it is getting stored with appropriate values and in the meaning you have the appropriate values okay okay yeah so now click on back and now check the view region it has to show, it has to show the meanings right airway miscellaneous everything yeah. Yeah. okay now coming to the other functionality attachment functionality 
So now here, attach, when you consider attachments or maybe file concept in the OA framework, there are many ways. Now, the, the concept which we would like to discuss is, we would like to have a attachment link on a row level here. For each invoice line, let us say, you know, now if you consider the travel, most of the times you prefer to have a attachments here, right? You have to submit the attachments, then only you have a appropriate expense will be claimed by us. Now what we do is, we'll have attachment feature. OA by default provides one of the attachment feature. It is called attachment link or maybe attachment image. So we'll try to use that one, but the drawback for this one is by default, it stores the information in the FND blob table. FND tables, the seeded tables. Okay, it will not, we don't have any feature to store the data in the custom table if you're using attachment image. Let us say if you want to store the attachments in your local table, I mean your normal custom table, then we have to write our own coding. But if you use attachment image functionality, within two minutes you can just finish the functionality of the attachment logic. Because it's a, it's a proven oh. functionality, so it advice is always has to be, this particular function, functionality should be used. Okay. Okay, because it's a proven one and it just, it doesn't take more than two minutes to implement for a developer. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. now in the DML page, and here, I'm in the update region, okay, in the DML range. And one more thing, when you're having a components, you know, if you observe here, in our case, we are able to easily identify the appropriate regions, right? The reason is because we had appropriate naming convention, else it would have been very difficult. Yeah. Right? That also matters. So in the table region, right click here, click on new item, and change the item style to attachment image, okay? Item style, I just change it to attachment image. If you observe, under the attachment image, we just got some more components which are created here, okay? So first thing is attachment ID. And we have to assign the Vivo instance for this, our lines Vivo, okay? And then here in the attachment image, there are a few things we have to work on. So one is, one is entity map, okay? And there's another thing called primary key and category map. The new primary key. And on the entity map, again, perform right click and click on category map. So first thing is we have attachment image item. Under that, we have entity map. Under entity map, we have primary key as well as category map, okay? So in the entity yeah. map, just mention the entity. It's a user-defined entity name, okay? I'll just say lines underscore invoice. This is our entity. It's user-defined entity name. And then other thing is primary key. In our case, the primary key is our line ID. So we'll select line ID. Mm -hmm. Now coming to category map. So for a document, generally, you know, like a normal ERP instance, when you are uploading data to FND blob, it requires what kind of document it is, whether it's an invoice, it's a purchase order, whether it's a sales order, right? Okay. That information we have to mention. So here, this is, for this one, we have to make sure that you have to mention the proper value here. And we already have a table called FND document categories, I guess. Yeah, FND document categories. So we have to mention the code. We have to take the code from here, document categories. Yeah, the name, this name we have to mention. Now in our case, let us say I'll select MIC, miscellaneous. Okay? okay, that's it. Done, attachment is done. It, so it, see, uh, when, yeah. When we went to attachment ID, we only mentioned the new instance, but we did not mention uh, which attribute there, right? So can we leave that null? We don't have any feature, first of all. You don't even have any column called V attribute. Okay, okay, yeah. So for the functionality here is, we just need to mention the view instance, and then the remaining okay. information, the FND, what you say, your document will get stored in the FND table, okay? Oh, so the linkage yeah. between your line, line, your lines table and FND table is just your invoice line ID because that's where we mentioned oh. the primary key, right? Yes, yes, entity map. Yeah, that's how they'll get linked. Okay. Now let's see. Click on search. Click on update. Yeah. Can you see this one attachment plus symbol? Yeah. Click okay. on yeah. plus symbol. Now, click on Browse. You can just select any document. Apply. 
that's it and just click on save it will get committed by default it will not get committed you just click on save then it will get committed okay. right it shows a now clip, clip icon this clip icon generally appears in the normal forms also right okay click on view now it shows a list of documents which which are attached to this particular invoice okay you can perform again dml dml stuff on this one okay and attachment click on gross click on return to. okay so how do you open those attachments stream yeah click on view and it shows hyperlink right on the file name okay Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So all the information, whatever is there with respect to attachment, that will get stored in the seeded tables. Okay. That's the default functionality. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And now, other thing, other pending thing. You now, what we have is, let us say, consider that. Now, in the header level, also we have the amount, right? header level also we have the amount so generally what what the header amount should be calculated based on what you enter at the line level isn't it yeah sum of line amount yeah. sum of line amount okay so what we have to do the basic thing is user may always try to change the line amount that's a basic thing right so what we have to do always we have to refresh the header amount so okay. we'll just do that and also we'll make this particular one this amount as a read only in the header level and will make the user to enter the amount at the line level. Let's see that. Okay. Yeah. So in the invoice DML page, the first thing is in the header level, in the header update region, invoice amount, make this as message style text in the update region also. Okay. Next thing is how do we capture the how do we capture the event for that, right? We have to capture the event, isn't it? So in the okay. lines update region, sorry, I think I did wrong. Yeah. I'm in the lines, right? So in the header update region, I have to change it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Now this is a mount field. So what we do, message text input, yes, that's correct only. The only thing is just scroll down and set the fire action on this one. Set the fire action on this one and have an event on this. Okay. Amount underscore event. This is my event. That's it. What we have to do? Just iterate all the rows and get the amount value, sum it, and then update in the header level. Okay. So that's what we have to do. Okay. So first of all, let us write the business logic public update header amount so for this one we require both the things we require header as well as we require lines Okay. Yeah. See, um, we use current row here, right? Uh, when would we use a row reference? Is it okay if we want to use row reference here? Yeah, so re row, if you use row reference, you'll get only that particular current row information, right? Acha, you mean to say like for header header stuff? Yeah. So header, so forget. you'll get row reference if you are performing any action on that particular current row, right? Now in this one, we are not performing any action on the current row, right? Header level I'm saying about. In the header level, oh, okay. we are not doing any action on the header level. So we'll not get current row, you'll not get row reference there, isn't it? For the header. Okay. You'll get, yeah. the, you'll get the row reference for the line, that is correct. But just having a row reference for that line is not sufficient now. 
Yes, yes. Okay. Now one more thing. To iterate all the rows, irrespective of the filter criteria, you know, we can we have to use row set iterator or uh, maybe if you remember in our vivo dot get filter rows, right? In that also we have we have an option. Yeah. Query criteria is yeah. there. Row set. Yeah. Lines view dot create row set iterator. Lines data. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now what we have to do, we have to get the amount. So the amount will be number, okay? okay. Oracle JVO domain number, right? Okay. So line amount. So what we do, first thing is we also require integer, line amount. Okay. Now, so invoice lines amount, get lines row dot get amount okay now what we do is line amount is equal to line amount plus maybe let me try uh, yeah okay okay and now the other thing is here in the header row level set amount we require number isn't it yeah so a new number of line right okay that's how we'll set it now this method we have to call on the fire action Event yeah. Okay. okay, that's it. Okay. Click on search, update. Okay, this is null. Sorry, this, you know, here if you observe, it is showing 1000 and it is showing 100 here. The reason is like uh, initially we did not have that logic, right? So that's the reason it is yeah. showing that way. So we should have to ignore that. Now let's try to update the value here. Let us say, I'll say 500. Now above value should be 1500. Okay, I got exception. Let's see this. And yes, null pointer. Okay, so can you say why it is why it is giving null pointer? Of course. Yeah, the remaining two rows are Yes, remaining two rows. And also see here, when you get null pointer, it does not need to worry. Most of the times, if it is a custom code, it clearly tells you it which line, which particular method, which particular file. So we have all, okay. all the information. Just find out the line number, line number 45. 
So hopefully in the AMIMPL line number 45 it is having an issue. It exactly pinpointing this information. Can you see 45? Yeah. So the basic thing is if the invoice amount is null because for some of the rows the value is null, right? So if it is null, you cannot get a value, isn't it? That is why if we just Not mentioned dot int value. So this will give you this will give an exception. Okay. So what we do is simply if invoice line amount not equal to null, right? And what we can do? Yeah. That's it, right? Yeah. That's it. Search, update, let's try again, 250, okay, got, it set to 350 now, yeah, okay. 600, 950, 68, got it, so this is how we can set the header level amount. Save it. Okay. Now for the header ID 342, set, check whether the amount is 1630 or not. For header ID 342. Okay. 342, amount is 1630. Okay. This is how we can set the amounts. And other thing is, let us say, assume that you have a requirement that, you know, like uh, for the miscellaneous or maybe let us say for stationary. Okay. Now, if you're at all, if you have a requirement saying that, okay, for the stationary, for the stationary, the amount should not be greater than 100. Okay. What should we do? How do we write? So in the same event, uh, right? Chain. Yeah. So what we can do? Sorry, come again. In the same, uh, we will get a web bin. We'll use web bin and see if it's stationary and if the amount is 680, then we'll write uh, raise an exception or something. Yeah. See, one, one, one more thing. Important thing here is when you have a table region, we should never talk about web bin. Okay. If it is, if oh. the components are independent, now if you if you consider the above case, yes, you can use a normal web bin approach. But if these components of the table region, now tell me like how do you get a web bin? How can you get a web bin? Because these will be created on the fly, right? In the static fashion, yes, we have the web bin. Now what is happening in this invoice head, this particular line is getting repeated, right? And the lines are dynamic now here. It's not just static de design. These are getting generated automatically based on the framework functionality. Now, so see, uh, we if you want to say if you want to set the column name, those things are different. But now the problem is, now we have a line type here, and now let us say I enter the amount here. Now using my OAMSH text input for this particular company, you cannot get that information. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So there are multiple. Yeah. Multiple rows. Yeah, multiple rows. So that's the reason. No. Only basic thing is when you are working with a table region, never use any of the. I mean, you'll never. You doesn't need to use web bin. That may not work. That's okay. what I am trying to tell you. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So now, what we have to do is our requirement is for this line type stationary amount should not be this much. So what we do is whenever you have a business logic, you may have a requirement saying that while entering the value you want to raise an exception or maybe while saving it. Either way. So now let us say on save you would like to have a validate on save you would like to have a validation. So in the validation we'll have all the we'll we'll try to have all the validation methods. So that you know we'll try to create a generic validation method. Now what we do is let us say public void validate invoice data. So th this is a generic method we write it and from this one we'll write one more method public void validate invoice line amount. 
So why I'm writing okay. like this one? Because in general, real time, most of the times you'll be having n number of validations. So it becomes very difficult for a developer to write all the logic in a single method. So always have a different validation method for each particular entity and then club them. What I would do from here, from the main method, I'll just call this method like this. Okay. So this will ease our readability as well as the confusion. Now, okay. Again, we have to iterate all the data, right? So I can just use the same logic which we just got here, the row iterator logic. Okay. Okay. okay now here, what we do? So whenever the like, uh, yeah. So or maybe we can use the filter rows because we want to get the data for a specific row, right? Specific data, not for all the rows. Either way. This. Yeah. So. M I C. Oh no no. S T N. Okay. So I don't need this. And uh, what I will do is, if lines row, okay, get line type. So always prefer to set select get not equal to null and then Compare like okay. this. Compare static value with your value with your dynamic value. So I'll just say STN dot equal lines row dot get line type. Okay. If it's a line type, then what we have to do? Then the next thing is if invoice line amount is not equal to null and okay. and here yeah here comes the problem. Okay, now what we have to do is, if it is not equal to null, then you know you it will not have any null point issue, right? That's what we just observed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Other way, what you can do is, you can also compare number with a number. This number is a class data type. It's Java class. It's not just Java basic data type. There's a difference between Java basic data types as well as Java class data types. Now this number number is a class data type. So here it shows the methods also. If you observe, now invoice line amount. It shows dot equals or compare okay. to. It's a it's a you know like a, that's the thing. What I can do is it's already not equal to null, right? I can just select in dot int value. If it is greater than hundred, then I have to raise an exception like this. Okay. In wallet line amount or stationary line type. That's it. Now this logic, this validate invoice data logic, we have to call it when user clicks on save. On save okay. button before performing commit, now call this one like this. Yeah. Generally, generally one more thing is we never prefer to write commit method at this level, okay? So we can, you should have, you know, what we can do is, what we can do is you can have this commit at that level, at that place only, in the validate. Okay. Okay, okay, yeah. So commit should always be written in the, in the AM stream? Yes, commit has, because this AM method, right? You're calling some method and you're doing some, okay. uh, you know, like you're, you're validating some business logic and then you're performing commit, right? So that's the reason we write there. Oh, Click on search, update. Let us say, now it is 6 ID, right? When you just click on save, it has to raise an exception. Right, invalid line, line amount for station line type. Yeah. Let us say I'll enter it as 20. Now the invoice amount should be changed and just click on save. Now it should not give any exception. Okay. Clear? Yeah. Yeah, so
yeah so that's all so i'll stop here and in the next class we'll discuss about you know like a performing dml operation using other approach like and uh, using the pl sql api okay okay all right yeah so considering the many project like uh, most of the functionalities are covered uh, as part of this one okay but remaining functionalities we again work on them as independently yeah sure yeah okay okay all right thanks Ray. yeah bye okay bye